Greetings, fruits and fruitettes. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, you're probably wondering what all this get-up is, and why I'm not in my usual Hawaiian shirt. Well, it's all to do with today's subject, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Released in 2005, this is the classic tale of Arthur Dent, a confused Englishman as broad as an Englishman can be. Based on the novel by Douglas Adams, this movie adaptation is by far the most visually adept of any adaptation to date. So grab your towels and don't panic, this is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Meet Arthur Dent, an ordinary Englishman with an extraordinary problem. His house is about to be demolished. Come off it, Mr. Dent. You can't lie in front of the bulldozers forever. Oh, well, I'm going. We'll see you rust first. It's here that we're introduced to Ford Prefect, an acquaintance of our protagonist, who arrives in a shower of peanuts and beer. Here. Good, excellent. Come on, let's go to the pub. Whisked off down the local for a calming pint, Ford tells Arthur the truth. What if I told you I really wasn't from Guildford? I was from a small planet, somewhere in the vicinity of Beetlejuice. <laughs> Must be Thursday. Could never get the hang of Thursdays. Hey, look. We flash back to the last time Arthur met a girl. What? I all these people are idiots. God. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the textbook definition of awkward. And we meet a very old friend of the show. Back in the present day, Arthur's house is demolished. Followed swiftly by the Earth itself. Subsequently, we're introduced to the book itself. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a wholly remarkable book. Ford and Arthur stow away on a Vogon ship. Vogons. I hate hitchhikers. Paul? Vogons are one of the most unpleasant races in the galaxy. Not evil, but bad-tempered, bureaucratic, officious, and callous. They can't think, they can't imagine, most of them can't even spell, they just run things. Now, they explain away all the different languages and the problems of translation via the gift of the Babelfish. A tiny yellow fish that you put in your ear that feeds on brainwaves and translates everything everyone says into your chosen tongue. But oh dear, they're captured by the Vogon guards. Resistance is useless. And to make matters worse, they're tortured with Vogon poetry. As the third worst in the universe. Either die in the vacuum of space, or tell me what you thought of my... Now there's a choice. Ooh, interesting rhythmic devices, which seemed to uh, counterpoint the underlying metaphor of the humanity of the Pogonity of the poet's soul. Oh. Mm. Up and Things go from bad to worse as they face certain death in the vacuum of space. This is nothing. Yeah, we're gonna die. Seconds later, they're picked up by the Heart of Gold, a state-of-the-art spacecraft stolen at its christening by the Galactic President, Zaphod Beeblebrox. Beeblebrox, universally... From crewman number six to President of the Galaxy in just six years. Well done, that man. And crewed by Trisha McMillan, the girl from the party, who now goes by the name Trillion. Peter says we have a couple of hitchhikers in our receiving bay. We need you to go down to the number two entry bay and pick up our stowaways and bring them up here. Just that. I won't enjoy it. Yeah, well, that's life. Life? Don't talk to me about life. Marvin the Paranoid Android, ladies and gentlemen, as voiced by Alan Rickman. Though in my opinion, he's getting a little bit typecast. On the main deck, an improbable coincidence occurs. Arthur? This is Zaphod Beeblebrox, president of the galaxy. He's my cousin, he's... We've met. <laughs> this is him, Ford. Uh, would you like to see my spaceship, like? Hello, Arthur. Trisha. How you doing? Hey, Trillian! 
Oh, denied. But before Arthur can reveal the terrible truth to Trillian, we discover Zaphod's hidden talents. This man says, shut your face, I kick in his ass. Friends, let's connect, you and I. Didn't see that one go, did you? Pop right out of the box! Oh, that doesn't sound good. And then, Vice President Questiola Rontoch shows up in a Vogon cube. I have to do everything. Yeah. Surrender the stolen vessel at once, or we will take action as... Beeblebrox's other head orders the ship into hyperspace. Oh, sure. Trillian shows Arthur the ship's kitchen, but the tea, if one can even call it that, is severely lacking. <laughs> Arthur, in space. Hey. Zaphod reveals the method in his madness. I think. You see, a couple of pandimensional beings created a computer to tell them the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Return to this place in exactly seven and a half million years. And the answer is. 42. But the answer's no good without the question, and so the decision is made to build a computer to calculate the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Ten million year program. I shall design this computer for you, and it shall be called... And so they fire up the infinite improbability drive and arrive at... Planet Built Bottle 6. <laughs> On the surface, we are introduced to the genial former pirate turned spiritual leader, Hummer Kavula. Oh, I think you think you don't. But we both know you do. Kavula has the coordinates to Magrathea, but there's a catch. Something for nothing, Zephyr. You must bring me something in return. A very special gun designed by the greatest computer ever invented. Along with the gun, Kavula wants a token of good faith. <laughs> Oh no! Back! Go back! Don't leave me alone! But Rontoch has found them, and Trillian is captured! Commander, the President is the kidnapper! You're going to kill him! Our mismatched heroes set off in hot pursuit and land on the Vogon homeworld. No. Yes. We're on the Volgon planet. Yes, it is. It's Megathea. But oh dear. Trillian learns of the Earth's unfortunate demise. Who in their right mind gives an order to destroy a planet? So you need to go back and fill when you fill okay. in the facilitating form. Hey, Mr. Me. I'm British. I know how to cure that. Absolutely. Absolutely. When it comes to queuing, nobody beats the British. And while Trillian's fate hangs in the balance, Consider how lucky you are that life has been good. The boys wrestle with Vogon bureaucracy! But this isn't a presidential release of prisoner form. Those are blues. It's, uh, it's a Patricia McMillan. Patricia McMillan. Mm. Okay. And so Trillian is released. But she's got a bone to pick with the pea brained press. You idiot! You signed the order to destroy Earth. He did? I did? Yes! Love and kisses, they fun? Deplorable! Absolutely deplorable! Resign immediately! No, I won't. With this little problem sorted, we're finally off to Magrathia. My circuit to tell you that we're currently in an orbit at an altitude of 300 miles around the legendary planet of Magrathia. Magrathia! But oh dear, the planetary defenses kick in! With just seconds to spare, Arthur presses the improbability button, and the missiles are transformed. Now, the missiles are transformed into a bowl of petunias and a very surprised looking whale. The whale is quite happy to be alive, whereas the bowl of petunias only thinks, oh no, not again. If we actually knew why it was thinking, oh no, not again, we'd know a lot more about everything 
than we do right now. The crew land on Magrathia and come across a trio of portals. What are those things? Hey! As Arthur and the others bicker among themselves, Trillian dives in. Ford and Zaphod follow. But Arthur is less enthusiastic. Arthur meets a mysterious figure. Excuse me. Uh, you must come with me. My name is, 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 is Slotty Bartfast. Slotty Bartfast takes Arthur to the Magrathane Planet Building Factory. Meanwhile, Zaphod addresses Deep Thought. We have travelled long! Thor, is it here? No, it's not here, it's another world. It or at least it was, until the Vogans destroyed it to make way for a hyperspace expressway. Crikey, this is all getting a mic too Dirk Gently for my sensibilities. What do you mean you don't know who Dirk Gently is? Read a book! But there's still the little matter of the point of view gun. You know, you must... It's really frustrating. You know. And in a touching scene, Trillian gives Zaphod both barrels. I always wanted to know if there was more to life, and now you're crushed because you find out there really isn't. Give me that thing. It won't affect me, I'm already a woman. Really? This is the road that you want to go down? While my anti-misandric sensibilities are another video entirely, I will say that I do have more empathy than is indicated here and... Well, I'll spare you the rant. L let's just move on, let's move on. And so, our heroes are reunited on a new Earth, and Arthur finally gets that cup of tea. But oh dear! What was in that boat? Luckily, Arthur Dent has grown a backbone and puts paid to the recalcitrant rodents. You'd think that pan-dimensional beings had come up with some kind of digital brain reader so they could copy the contents of a human brain. Just sort of drilling it and cutting it out seems a little bit barbaric for pan-dimensional beings. And so, Arthur decides to head off into adventure, and he, along with Trillian, Ford, Zaphod, and Questula, the Vice President, head off to the end of the universe. Just you and me. Come on. But that's another story. Anyway, that was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And you know something? I'm going to put this into the House of Love. This is, even with all of the American money, and the mostly American protagonists, still a very British film, being as the original was a very, very British story. Sure, this movie adaptation is a lot less cynical and a lot more emotional than the BBC serial from the 1970s, but Douglas Adams himself was a lot less cynical when he wrote the screenplay in 2001. And I think that this is a fine tribute to a one-of-a-kind author, humorist, and sci-fi legend. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and put the kettle on and make some tea. to warn you all, but oh dear, you may not share our intellect, which might explain your disrespect, for all the natural wonders that grow around you, so long, so long, and thanks for all the fish.